made many movies like this, if any movies like this. As you can see, it's, a, it's definitely an R-rated movie. Um, and um, everyone in the cast is openly LGBTQ, except for the celebrity cameos. Um, and that was really important to us. You know, even, in, even the folks playing the straight characters are all openly LGBTQ in real life. So yeah, it was, a, it was a different kind of movie in many ways, and we're very proud of that. And to tell, to tell this kind of story of, in this scale, with this, with this budget, was, is fantastic. And a testament to Universal that they put their muscle behind it. Yeah, round of applause for Universal. <laughs> When we were writing the movie for years, based on other experiences that I've had, writing shows and stuff about gay characters, I, I kept waiting for someone at Universal to say, okay, that's too gay, that's too sexual, that's too this, that's too that, straight people won't get this or whatever, and I never heard that once. And I very, very much appreciate that. Uh, they were amazing to work with, and they just wanted us to be honest and authentic, as long as we were funny. Yeah. They just said more Debra Messi. That's <laughs> <laughs> the only note we got. Oh, well, I was going to ask about Debra Messi, but I'll ask now. Like, you know, like Debra Messi, Kristen Chenoweth, was it easy? I mean, I know uh, Debra Messi, you guys, is my fi favorite Billy on the street. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but, thank you, utter silence. <laughs> <laughs> it's, on, it's on YouTube. Um, uh, were, they, were they easy to get across the line to have these cameos? It wasn't easy. These are very busy people, but um, it was. What? That's a line. From it's a line in bros, actually. Line bros. It's, it's not easy, movies. but it's worth it. Yeah. Um, you could say that about the bros experience in general. You know, it's never easy, but it's worth it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was an honor. I mean, Ben Stiller to come and sort of nod to, you know, night at the museum in that way. Um, it was very cool that they they all agreed to come and, and do it. But they all, yeah, they all did say yes very quickly. I think they all really loved the script and loved the idea of being part of it, and yeah. Yeah, they were great. How does it, for you, like, diff, like diff to other jobs you've worked on? Um, well, <laughs> I, I mean, it truly is a sort of testament to the experience of being on set with a lot of the LGBT performers. It was very unique to me. I've worked in film and television a long time, and I've never been on a set with an all, a, a queer cast. Uh, entirely, but also I was sort of really impressed and Nick did this he sort of would always Ask you what do you think is the right thing to do? It's so much of your experience as an actor is like wear these clothes say these lines do this thing And you're sort of just asked to kind of plug into it in a very specific way But the nature of the movie was what are your specific experiences and how are they unique? And how can I help highlight and and very early on both Billy and Nick asked me, like, so when creating Aaron, what do you think you would sort of add to it? And they were asked about my ideas and opinions, so that was a very unique thing that you don't get a lot in movie making, in my experience. Did you find pressure, Nick, like, to taking on such a huge uh, production? Well, I mean, I've made a few movies at this point, so I wasn't that, ner I don't know, I'm always naively optimistic, so I, I didn't feel that pressure, I just knew you know, there's, it's a weird combination of, of hoping it's gonna, or it's kind of assuming it's gonna be great and being terrified it's gonna suck. That's like the, that's the line that I write at all times. And I think like, when Billy and I sat down to start writing it now many years ago, like, it was just really important to us that it be honest, that it be, that it have a happy ending, and that it be really funny. And those were really the only three rules that we kind of worked on, and we just, and we both, and I think you have the same kind of, you know, we share the same tone. Uh, and the same sensibility, and we're both also very scared of a thing not being good, and I think we also are both willing to go hard at the joke and hard and hard at the emotion and make make sure that's emotional. And so that that kind of was the experience. That actually was the intimidating thing because these guys are like the, the joke is so precious, and the joke really is, and this movie is funny, and it has to be funny. My experience as an actor is like I come with feelings. <laughs> there might be tears. <laughs> But like, it, it is fuck jokes. those feelings. <laughs> yeah, fuck the feelings. But like, it, it really is about like the joke, and that that is the thing that was always protected and preserved, and we looked out for it. Um, yeah, that was an intimidating part of the set. I mean, you've done you've, you've done so many massive films, forgetting Sarah Marshall, so many to, to name. On the on the last scale of set, uh, I mean, obviously there's tons of laughs throughout the film, but uh, making the film, how much did you like get to just have a great time and laugh? 
It, I mean, the, the, it was a really, it was a magical experience, you know, the whole from start to finish. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm straight. That's a thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how you can apologize. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. You were born that way. There's no <laughs> you were born that way. I went to a conversion therapy. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I straight. Yeah. Uh, but it was, I mean, being, you know, be, being on a set with an entirely LGBTQ cast was a magical experience for me, and, and, and it kind of shifted the whole experience from start to finish. Shifted my worldview, uh, and which is the point of making movies and making art, and that was a beautiful thing. And really, all straight people crazy. should direct gay yeah. films. <laughs> <laughs> we might be in a better that place in the world. That is, that's all that needs to happen. Is every straight person is direct. Ron DeSantis is. <laughs> <laughs> He's the governor of Florida, by the way. <laughs> so glad you brought that up, Luke. How did Luke come to being cast? Was it, a, was it an easy decision? Or? Um, it, he auditioned. We actually, Luke and I did not know each other at all um, before he walked into the audition room. I think the first lines that we said to each other were the first lines we say to each other in the movie. The audition scene we used was that club scene on the balcony where we first meet each other for the first time. You look angry. And then I say, I hear you're boring. Yeah. Um, it's very intimidating too, like stepping into like, you know, auditioning is never a fun part of being an actor. You have to do it. Stepping into that audition because I knew that they wanted to cast an openly LGBT person. It was like every single openly LGBT man that is kind of like me was sitting in that up there. And I was like, oh shit, they're so much more famous than me. Yeah, but we, we knew right off the bat, I mean, Romantic comedies, no matter how good the script is or how good the work Nick and I did, was it, it lives or dies based on the chemistry of the two leads, you know? Um, and I don't know, I guess it's for the audience to decide whether we had chemistry or not, but... Uh, <laughs> um, but we, yeah, I think maybe because I'll be honest, some of the other actors who were all wonderful actors who auditioned, they were great. I knew them a little bit in real life. But because we didn't know each other, and I don't know, there was like a mystery there. There was like a little spark. And I think the whole idea of our characters, the whole the way through the movie, literally till the end maybe, but especially when, we're, when those first scenes where we're figuring out if we want to be together, we're both intimidated by each other for different reasons. You know, um, and that just was there because we really didn't know each other. You know, we were a little scared of each other, although we were both mutually, you know, respectful of each other. Like we really respected each other, but we didn't know each other. And I think that actually helped in a way. Yeah. And and, and can, you, can you say anything to the stigma of playing gay, like queer and gay in in Hollywood, and how tricky that is? Yeah, I mean, every gay actor's experience is different. Um, I, I do think that, you know, for me and, and for Nick and for the studio and everyone, it was important that we used as many openly LGBTQ actors as possible because historically, especially in major studios, but also in a lot of the more high profile indie movies we've gotten over the years, on the rare occasions that LGBTQ characters were at the center of the story, 95% of the time they were played by famous straight actors, right? And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's just that so frequently LGBTQ folks were not allowed to play ourselves, right? And we certainly were not asked to play straight characters in major roles in major films. And so what's left? There's nothing left, you know? And so we were just often so left out. We just weren't given enough opportunities. And so we thought this was an opportunity not to say that gay should only play gay or straight should only play straight, because I don't think anyone believes that, but it was just a, a good opportunity to try to correct that imbalance a little bit and give LGBTQ folks more opportunities to show the world like, hey, we can we can fill out the entirety of a cast of a movie and really make you laugh your ass off. You know, like we can do it too. We absolutely have. And it's, I'll also say too, from a pure comedic standpoint, the secret weapon of any comedy is talent you've never seen before. Uh, being super funny. If you think about like Melissa McCarthy and Bridesmaids, it's like someone who you might not have seen. And so deciding to go with an entirely LGBTQ cast, we knew we would find people that hadn't necessarily had this 
stage to perform on. And yeah. To be this funny. Because I think when you watch the movie, you know, there's a few people who are recognizable from TV, and there's some people you've never seen before, but so many of them, any one of them could hold the, to like star in a vehicle of their own. You know, like Eve Lindley, who's one of the younger actresses uh, on the museum board, the one who's like obsessed with social media and posting everything. I mean, she's so funny. You know, like she deserves a movie of her own. Like every one of them can and should have already had movies of their own. But she came up to me, she was like, I have a joke about lemonade, can I do it? And I was like, that's the funniest joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to do that joke. I mean, they're, they're all so funny and everyone gets a chance to shine. And um, that was just one of the many special things about being able to shoot it together as a group. And when we were shooting it, you could really feel, I've been on a lot of sets, but I think because we were all LGBTQ, even though obviously like everyone has different challenges and it's a very eclectic community and it's not a monolithic group as we say in the movie, but we're still bonded by the fact that we're all in that community together. And we were all really grateful to be there. I think Nick has said before, he's never seen a cast show up where everyone was always so prepared. And I was like, yeah, because we're not allowed to wing it. Right? If we, if we wing it and we fail creatively, we don't get to do it again. You know, there's so much pressure on it. And everyone really showed up and like brought their A game. And it was just I also fire people like that. So <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah. We lived in fear of Nick. As, yeah. as you can tell, he's a very mean person. It's a good one things. Um, when, when was the inception of the project? Was it like pre COVID? Or like, what, was, did you have to stop down? What happened? Yeah, we were gonna shoot in March of 2020, and yeah, so it was good timing. Uh, <laughs> and I was scouting the movie and was very scared about the thing that was happening in the world. And it was about to go in to scout, there was a scene that took place in the hospital that we cut, but I was about to scout the hospital and I was like, oh, I don't wanna go into the hospital. And then I was like, how are we gonna shoot this movie? And then I called the studio and said, we have to shut down. <laughs> yeah, of course. A crazy call to make as a director, because all you're trying to do is get your thing greenlit. Because this is before everything fully shut down, you know? Um, of course I was like, you're freaking out for no reason. <laughs> like, you know, don't shut down the gay movie, all right? We gotta shoot this movie. Um, and then we shut down for about a year and a half and we didn't know if it would even come back, if the studio would want to do it, but luckily they did. My very selfish experience of COVID was this. Um, I got in very good shape in March. <laughs> and then all the gyms shut down. And they said, well, we might do it. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll try to stay in shape. <laughs> and that was a difficult thing to do over COVID. <laughs> a lot of backyard push-ups happening. <laughs> what this man has been through. <laughs> Look, the struggle is alive and well. Want to talk about COVID? This is the place to do it. Like Melbourne, we fucking love talking about COVID. <laughs> we are the longest lockdown city in the world. I know. And then Chile overtook us, and we were like, "Fucking put us back in." So we did. <laughs> <laughs> we go for that. <laughs> but so your characters in the film, how how similar are they to your lived experiences? For me, you know, it's not identical, um, obviously. I've actually, I've never been in a Bobby Aaron relationship, actually, but it was pulled, you know, there are elements of it which are very much pulled from my personal life, for the lives of my friends, patterns of behavior I've noticed among my gay friends over the years, um, at least those of my generation, you know, we're all a little different. Um, but a lot of that was taken from real life, um, and, I mean, we, we had already written Luke's character before he auditioned, but once Luke came on board, we talked about your life, and you know that really helped us flesh out the character. I, I, whenever I watch the movie, the beginning of the movie where Aaron, Aaron has this journey that was beautifully written into the script, and whenever I watch the beginning of the movie, it reminds me of who I was when I was younger, 18 or 19, uh, before I had moved to New York City, before I had come out, before I had sort of... Um, met the theater community that became my world, and it's hard for me to watch the beginning of the movie because it just reminds me of what it means to not fully be comfortable living in your skin. So I, I say the, the parts of Aaron that are closest to me are sort of, I think, me before I really truly felt comfortable in my skin. But I will say a fun little anecdote <laughs> um, is uh, we were a couple of weeks into shooting. The song I sing at the end of the movie was written while we were shooting. It was not in the script, 
before we started shooting. Um, and we were about two or three weeks into shooting and we were shooting outside Central Park late one night in Manhattan. And I was always, at this point, still trying to get to know Luke. Um, as a shutdown, <laughs> you know, uh, and so I was just asking him questions, right? So we were hanging out on set, and I thought, I was like, huh, I wonder what type of music Luke listens to, because like I'm a typical gay, and I'm like Madonna, Mariah, you know. Um, but I had a feeling Luke was not that gay, like that that type I'm of gay. gay. Yeah. No, I know you're gay. I, I understand. I was in the sex scenes. I know. <laughs> But I was curious about... <laughs> I don't even get this, what's happening? Sorry, I don't know, we had drinks at dinner and now we're drunk. Um, but we, um, I asked Luke what type of music he listens to in real life, and sure enough, he said he, he, said he likes jazz, but that he really loves country music and he loves Garth Brooks. And I thought, and I think I literally said to him, I was like, Garth Brooks? Like, you know, because a lot of gay people, it's not like what you think they would listen to stereotypically, right? And so that went right into the script, into that first scene. And and then at some point I thought, we always thought that Bobby, we you know, we always had Aaron running to Bobby at the end doing like that classic rom-com run, but we always felt that Bobby needed to make a grand gesture too, you know, so that they were both reaching out to each other and we didn't, we just didn't know what it was and then all of a sudden I, uh, one morning, like a few weeks into shooting, started writing a country song, and I thought, oh, what if Bobby sings a song in the style of the music Aaron likes um, as part of his gesture? And then, thankfully, Nick and the producers, you know, we were, we were, it was like a week before we had to shoot it, and I said, I was like, oh, we kind of wrote a song, um, and I'm wondering if we could shoot it in a week. I was like, sure, uh, yeah. let's do it. Figured out, and we did. And Mark Shaman, who composed the music, a very le a legendary, he came uh, all the way over to New Jersey, which is a specific geographical joke that won't work here. Uh, it's very close to New York City. Uh, and he came we call it here. What's that? Jalong. 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 Okay. I'm gonna laugh along with that. With your specific geographical joke. Do that in joke. Sydney. It'll kill. Okay. <laughs> Over and he uh, he played uh, the music live, which I never. I mean, I've done a lot of music in my movies, but it's always pre-recorded, and this wasn't. Uh, Billy sang live, and Mark played the music live. It was, yeah, but all that came out of that. Luke reacted live. That was his, yeah. that was his face reacting live. You really reacted well. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, that came out of a conversation Luke and I had. You know, waiting around on set. Oh, we're so thrilled to welcome you here in Australia. I'm going to ask you this final question. Um, Queer Australia, what is your, uh, what is your take? We, we have actually in St Kilda the, the largest, I, I might be getting this incorrect, the largest uh, LGBTQI uh, centre in the Southern Hemisphere. That's just opened oh. two years ago. Uh, but what is, your, um, what is your take on Queer Australia? Are you Kylie Minogue people? Are you Kath and Kim people? Are you Veronica? In, in the anticipation of this trip, Billy went on Grinder. <laughs> by, by the way, in anticipation of this trip, no, 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 but from New York, he was checking in on Sydney and Melbourne before. <laughs> and he did tell me the guys were really hot in Australia. Wow. My well, you should... threw me under the bus. <laughs> are you mad? No, of course not. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's true. I did that. <laughs> um, I'm a huge Kylie Minogue fan, obviously. <laughs> Kylie's cover of that's Kylie singing Everybody's Free to Feel Good at the end of the movie. Um, love Kylie. Um, yeah, queer, we went out last night. We went to gay bars last night. Where did we go? Molly's? Oh, yeah. oh And Circuit. Circuit. <laughs> Look, the Sundays for the gay community in Melbourne are a very big night, so we might Really? See Where do we go tonight? Molly's and Circuit. Say no more, say no more. But yeah, don't turn your grinder on this room because your phone might explode. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, and how can people support the feel like. Ha, su 
what the film outside of, I mean, I guess social media. And, and Post on social media, tell your friends if you liked it. It comes out on the 27th. And um, yeah, we'd love everyone to go and enjoy it in a movie theater. Yeah.